Hello everyone, in this video we're going to cover a uh, section 5.5 which is called the substitution method. This is like the first step in going further into integration and it's going to be very useful for not just calculus 1 but calculus 2, 3 and so forth. Okay? Now the idea is uh, pretty simple. Uh, we have this phi basic integrals which I pick these are the ones we are we will use more most of the time it doesn't mean these are the only five, five integrals so the idea is you're gonna do a substitution so that you will get something like this like this like this like that or like that and then the integral obviously will be something like this so we'll just do a bunch of examples and I will be pointing to to which one this is. Now, what the substitution method does is you want to make a substitution usually would, the, uh, sorry, the letter u. So that's why this is usually called the u substitution method. And remember, the integral has to be the, the same. But by doing a substitution, you're going to make it look like one of this. For example, let me do something very, very, very simple. Let's say that you have uh, the integral of x e to the x squared dx. All right, so now because of the e to the x, well, this is a very good candidate. So this is what we're going to do. So you're going to substitute u to be x squared. And then the derivative is going to be 2x dx. Okay? So now this integral is going to become the integral of e to the u du. So notice that the u gives you the x squared that you already have here. But the du gives you the dx, which is here. They give you 2x. But you, the original one only has a x. So therefore, to fix this this two, this two that it was not here, technically what you do is you divide by one, one half, okay? And then according to integral number two, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u plus c, but u was equals to x squared. And you can always check by taking the derivative that this will give you exactly this all right so let's we're just going to do a bunch of examples and then i'll just keep referring to which one we're using so let's say you have the following one the integral of cosine x sine q of x dx okay all right so here we're going to do the substitution that u is equals to sine why? Because the u is cosine x, which is right here. So then, even though this doesn't look anything like it, this is technically something like integral number number one. How? This is going to be now uh, u q du. Okay, so notice the u q is the sine x, and the du contains the cosine and the dx this cosine x dx is the du and the sine q will be the u q okay then according to integral number number one okay so this is one to integral number one this will be u to the four over four plus c but u was equals to sine so make sure you always change it to to x at the end and that's it again you can check that that's the the right integral by taking the, the derivative okay. all right okay let's try one now with integral three say you have the following the integral of x square over 4 plus, let's say, x cubed. 
right? So notice that the derivative of x square x q is equals to x square. So that should be a hint. We're gonna use this one. Sometimes it's confusing to choose between these two, but the more you practice, it will be easier to distinguish between them. You will see that. So let's say that u is equals to four plus x q. Then du is gonna be zero plus three x squared dx. Okay. And then you substitute, hence the name. So this will be the du. So notice that the du oops, the du is this part, but you have an extra thing which is the three, and on the bottom. This is going to be just u, okay? Now, since you have this three, which was not part of the problem, what we have to do is divide by one third. So therefore this will be one third, and according to integral number three, okay, this is supposed to be the natural log, okay, number three, so this will be ln of u plus c. So therefore, this will be one third ln of u, which was four plus x q, and that's it. All right. So now let's do a couple of examples where we where we use integral number four. Remember the integral number four, and you should definitely memorize all these ones. Is that the integral of this is equal to tangent inverse? Okay. So let's say that you have the Following example, let's say that you have um, here x, and this one is 1 plus x to the 4 dx. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let u equals to x squared. So this implies, okay that u square is equals to x square square, which is x to the four. Okay, remember you need to have the still the same interval. But if u is equals to to uh, x square, that means that the u is equals to two to x dx. So therefore when we do the substitution, this will become the integral of the u over 1 plus u square and you need a one half to cancel these two therefore this will equals to one half tangent inverse of u plus c but remember that u was equals to x square and that's it now you have to be very careful to be able to tell the difference between integral three and four, because sometimes just a small detail can change the whole thing. For example, this problem, because of the square on the bottom, it looks like this one, but there is an issue that you have a X on the, on the top. So in this case, the integral that is actually going to work here is three, now four, by doing the full substitution, uh, u equals to one plus x squared. So the u is going to be two x dx. So this will become um, the u over u. And again, you're gonna need one half to fix this two right here. So notice that this will be now uh, one half ln of u plus c, which is one half ln of one plus x squared plus c. Now you could also use the substitution just u equals to to x squared. So then this will give you du to x dx. But then you want to have to do a substitution twice because this will give you one half du over one plus u, 
then you will have to do another substitution and you will end up with this anyways. 1 plus u and then plus c. So this will be 1 plus x squared plus c, which is exactly the, the same thing. This one is a better substitution for this particular problem. All right, so let's keep just doing more examples. Let's say we have this e to the 2x. This is 1 plus e to the 2x dx. All right, so here, the first thing or the first substitution you try, it may not, may not work. So you, have to, you have to do this probably one, more than once at the beginning. So let's say that u is equals to 1 plus e to the 2x. Then the u will be 2 e to the 2x dx. Okay. So therefore, uh, notice that this part is already the, the, the u. So this this except for the two by the way it doesn't mean you always have a two there like we did one where you have a three in front it could be any any number so in this particular case this will be uh, this will be uh, the integral of du over u which is clearly ln or integral three so therefore this is going to have a ln of u plus c which is one half of ln of 1 plus e to the 2x plus c. That's it. Now, compare that with this. And this is why calculus 2, you have a whole chapter just on how to do integrals, different techniques. So let's say we have this instead. So now they look very similar, except that you have this part right here. So therefore here, notice that e to the 4x is the same thing as e to the 2x squared. So therefore here, u is going to be e to the 2x. You already know that the u is 2 e to the 2x. So therefore you can rewrite this as one half the integral of du over one plus u square which is tangent inverse so it will be tangent inverse of u plus c which will be tangent inverse of e to the 2x plus c all right so now let's do couple of x or at least one example where you had to use the integral from sine uh, sine inverse remember that this is equals to sine inverse u plus c and this is what i call integral number five so let's say you have the the following you have a uh, x square and this is equals to one minus x to the 6 dx okay. so the clear giveaway that you may have to use this formula is because you have the, the square root okay so that should be the clear giveaway but also notice that x to the 6 is the same thing as x cubed square and notice that the derivative with respect to x of x cubed has an x squared. So that's a giveaway there. So therefore, based on this, let u equals to x cubed. So then the u will be equals to 3 x squared dx. Okay. Right, so therefore this will be the integral of the u over 1 minus u square okay because u square is x cubed square which is x to the 6 
So this will be a uh, sine inverse. You also need a one third here to, to cancel this three. So this will be a one third sine inverse u plus c, which will be one third sine inverse of x to the six plus c. That's it. Again, the clear giveaway that you may have to use this formula is that you have the square root. It doesn't mean that you always have to use it, you have a square root, but that's a clear indication you may have to. All right, so let's go finally to uh, rule number one or integral one or in integral two. Let's say you have this. Let's say you have secant square times e to the tangent x dx. Clear here it should be obvious that u is tangent. Why? Because the derivative is secant square dx. So therefore this will be the integral of e to the u du. Okay, notice that the du has this part and this part. So therefore this will be e to the u plus c, which will be e to the tangent x plus c. Now, it doesn't mean that you only have these five integrals, but once you get a hang of this, you can do other ones and play with other ones. For example, let's say you have ln x over x dx. Then here, the substitution will be, let's say, ln x du will be dx over x. And notice that this part is the du. So therefore, this will be the integral of u du, which now goes back to integral number one. So it will be u squared over two plus c, which will be ln x squared over two, plus c. And you can always check by going backwards. By backwards, I mean take the derivative of this. And obviously, you can have a combinations of all of them. For example, you could have a tangent inverse x over 1 plus x squared. Here, you will be just tangent inverse. Why? Because the u is dx over 1 plus x squared. But notice that this is technically just uh, u du, which is technically integral number one. So this is the du right here. And according to rule number one or to integral number one, this will be u squared over two plus c which will be um, tangent inverse x square over 2 plus c. Okay. Now, let's look to the same idea, but a small, just a small change. Let's say that this was 1 over 1 plus x square times tangent inverse x dx okay the same idea u is still gonna be tangent inverse du still dx over one plus x squared but this is the slight difference here notice that the du is now this part right here so the du is this and this And the value will be u, which is now integral number three. So therefore, this is ln of u plus c will be ln of tangent inverse of x plus c. And that's it. Okay.